Hello and welcome to another edition of PositiveBritain.co.uk in association with ALB UK Television. Today I'm with one of the founders of Positive Britain, Michael Spooner. Hi, Ian. Welcome, Michael. Thanks again. Always, always Today we're going to really talk about what might be affecting business uh, with the news that's happening at the moment. So there's two current things in the news. One is this coronavirus um, that may be stopping yeah. China producing goods yes. and there's all sorts of worries about that yeah. and secondly with this flooding as well yes. businesses may be put out of business altogether because floods have come so regularly now mm. to some of these towns mm. and some of these shopkeepers especially mm. that they're even considering just going under literally yeah. uh, and uh, finding somewhere else or finding something else to do in their lives yes. what do you think is the answers what should the government be doing right now mm. to actually uh, get hold of this situation the environment agency is saying we're doing our best we spent yes. five billion on something and we're yes. spending another four billion on, on so forth that's right but a lot of it is I, I remember when um, when I first bought housing mm. um, that you you got uh, when, when you got the survey mm. through about the house it mm. also said you know do you realize you're on a floodplain okay. or yes. what have you yes. um, they've been building on floodplains for mm. so long mm. so what what do you think is the answer so so Ian thanks for yeah a positive Britain I think uh, well first let's look at the issue of the environmental and building on floodplains. I, 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 of course, many householders, Ian, uh, know that they're on a floodplain. It's in their survey, it's in their... And they, they, there's an issue about insurance. There's a government scheme that uh, should be in place to assist them. Uh, but, but don't you think as well, you know, with, with households mm. especially, Mm. that they can't sell their houses because well they can't yeah, but, but this is the problem because if you're going to get more and more because of the climate change issue and you've got more and more risk to your home so you can't sell it then it devalues your property yeah. uh, let alone the danger to life and limb and so on but it devalues the property uh, uh, it makes it impossible for people to get appropriate assurance contents insurance and so on so I, I think the, 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 the government, at first we haven't seen our Prime Minister step in and in his wellies, visit, <laughs> in his <laughs> wellies <laughs> visiting <laughs> at, at, at places in Europe. Although, York. strangely enough, yes. during the elections, mm. he was, uh, he, 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 yes, know, he, he would have been uh, up to his uh, uh, up to his chin uh, in water. In, in water, <laughs> right. But, but now, we, we, uh, the British people, British citizens are in Yorkshire, in north of England, are going through some serious unpleasantness sometimes this is people's well. livelihoods yeah, yeah. this is their whole their main asset is their home yeah. and, they, and it's been damaged it's been flooded and they want to see their prime minister doing something positive doing yeah. something uh, decisive and he's not there so we do need mr uh, johnson to please you know visit and do something powerful and do something and pass legislation if necessary to make sure that uh, every householder that is flooded has legal protection in law to make sure that they can get compensated for the damage mm. they don't have to be claiming and re get the revolving door with the insurance company mm. and that the local authority lo in their local area has enough resources to come in and put and then there's the flood yeah. defenses the the dredging of the rivers the yeah. river defenses uh, that, that capital expenditure, the infrastructure spending, we know there's a lot of money going into that. We know the government's doing something about it, Ian, yeah. but we know that's a, a five year yeah. plan. But you know, don't you think with even those types of things, I mean, they've been talking about mm. uh, different types of irrigation now yes. further up. Yes. Um, all that's going to do is, is hold the <laughs> water a, further up. Well, it might you push know. it down to the next town uh, downstream. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yes. So, so I, I think, um, I mean, the, the reality uh, is um, uh, that um, places, um, you know, uh, overseas, yes. um, in, you know, have already overcome this, this problem, problem. problem. Yes. you know, yeah, in Canada, the Netherlands, for yes, example. Exactly. Yes. Um, you find that they had this problem a century ago yes really. that's right. and, and they've managed to sort of overcome yes. all of this yes why do you think that um the british government haven't really managed to sort of contain this far yes. better looking at things yes. um 
like uh, the Netherlands and finding out what to do from them. Yeah, well, we got um, we got CABE, innit? We got the Commission for Architecture and Built Environment. They'd set the kind of building standards. Of the, I think they're called the Design Council now, I think. Mm. And they sort of design homes and they do, do that kind of built environment. Uh, work for the government and, and uh, of course they're independent. Uh, we, we really shouldn't be putting houses on flood. Floodplains should be farmland. No. And, I, and I suppose. Uh, uh, but it's, the problem with us Ian is that we live on 11% of the land mass in Britain yeah. uh, and, and uh, we're, we've got a green belt. We've got all sorts of rules and yes. planning regulations around where we can build houses. Um, we, we, we do need to start to make a decision because of climate change, uh, whether to slowly move people away from yeah. uh, the, the... Or perhaps the, a new type of construction. I mean, a new type if, of, or, if, if you look at... Um, on on stilts, they build them up. Precisely. Yes, they build them up high, and then, make, and then your ground floor yeah. is is tiled, so it's waterproof. Yes, so, so and it can't be out of the realm. Living rooms are upstairs, yes. everything's upstairs, and so downstairs is really just... Your, part, your, your kitchen and your yes. you know, so they could redesign homes they can put them on stilts yes. build them three four two, six seven foot off the ground so that you've got and you have a kind of flood basement which Absolutely. is literally tiled Absolutely. from floor to ceiling and we know that if water's in there it doesn't destroy the structure no. they can do these things it's going to cost more for the value of property in it's going to be a, a new way and we've got international standards like you say in holland and denmark yeah. and all those places uh there's the, the we we do have the models and the, the international standards uh in ca places like canada as well lots of places around the world have the answer yeah. we can do this but i think it's going to take a generation and we got i i expect that we need to build on instead of 11 percent of the land mass in britain we need to our conurbations need to be we need to expand that so that we and, and preserve the green belt, preserve biodiversity, but at the same time make sure that properties are decent yeah. and protected for people. Now, I, th I think the problem, you know, there again though is is that um, obviously uh, communities are based around workplaces yes, exactly. in the first place. Exactly. Um, there's this big issue at the moment about the northern powerhouse. Yes, that's um, right. Is there enough transport system? Yes. Apparently the transport systems are a real failure yeah. between Manchester and Leeds, for yes. example, and yes. places like that. Yes. But let's, let's come back to um, what do you think about businesses? Yeah. Now, I mean, there are so many small businesses, and as I know, you're an mm. expert yeah. on uh, that's right. uh, small businesses. You've worked regularly with the Federation of Small yeah, Businesses. Yes, that's right. How on earth can you actually keep on bailing out literally water mm, yeah. out of a business mm. and then two years later it's happening again? Yes, that's How right. do you actually manage something like that? Yes. Well, uh, I, I, first, first, Ian, businesses need to have a business, what they call a business continuity plan, a plan that is looking at the risk to the business. And where you locate your business is really critical to your success. So. Uh, you've got to take into account things like the um, if you've got a shop and you're in a town centre and the town centre floods every five years, then that makes some that may well make your business unsustainable. So I, I think there's going to be a thing there's going to be a big move over the next five to ten years with businesses taking environmental planning much 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 more seriously. It isn't just a bit of greenwashing or corporate social responsibility kind of policies it's going to be actually critical to your business success uh, and so I think a lot of businesses are going to have to do take it the climate change more seriously but don't, in but and don't that is increasingly think, happening yeah don't you, don't you think the problem though is mm. is that um, in reality so some of these places I mean haven't flooded for a hundred years and all of a sudden I know, I know. They're, they're, they're facing these concerns yes. now yes so um, traditionally see that the, the I think the problem at the moment is mm. um, perhaps, and I'm sure mm. uh, organisations like the Federation of Small yeah. Businesses are looking into this right now, yeah. but there needs to be a lobby mm. for shops up and down the country yeah. that are going to face regular flooding from now on, yes. and how the government yeah. can actually find a method that if this does happen, mm. um, that there is money put into it straight away yes. to actually help them uh, well, build I, their I, business back I, again. I think they should be relocated. I mean, you should move businesses to places that are sustainable, higher up, uh, out of town. 
in parts of the town centre that isn't, doesn't flood regularly and the town centre parts that flood, you don't have shops. You don't, that's not where the shopping centre should be. That's not where your small business should be. That's not where housing should be. It should be fields, it should be places of interest, beauty, you know, places where people want to go and see. And of course, if it does flood, we're okay with it because we know it will recede. Uh, and so we got to be a bit more smarter about relocating, reorganizing, restructuring our town centers, our, our environments where we live. This, it's a long-term plan for the United Kingdom to move it. Now, people are gonna say to me, oh, it's really difficult. It's, these are traditional places, we know that. But it, we do need to, re, you know, move. Mankind has always relocated yeah. uh, in response to the environment. Uh, uh, whether it was, you know, in you know, it would, you know, in the early days, you know, back in, you know, six thousand years ago, ten thousand years ago. You know, I, I was just uh, thinking, we, we we do need to just uh, uh, absolutely do something sensible. If, if if you, I mean, we may have to go back to medieval oh, times, yeah, to to where, where, where the reality was all the stores, all the shops, mm. if you like, all the businesses were mm. in the castle, yeah, within the castle yeah, yeah, walls, yeah, exactly. so, so yes, that yes. water couldn't get anywhere yeah, near. Exactly, exactly. Perhaps, perhaps we need to be building yeah. modern day versions. Well, yes, go, yeah, modern day versions of places where, which are protected, are structured, are high up, are in, you know, regulated spaces where people can go and shop rather than just place it. Anybody can, any Tom, Dick and Harry can start a business anywhere in theory in Britain. And, but they have to take the consequences of that. That might mean your business is unsustainable. And we know the internet now, many businesses, I would say 50% of all businesses are going to be just online businesses at the end of the day. Anyway, there ain't going to be no, there's enough, there's nothing to flood because there's no physical structure. It's all, a digital no. aspect so lots of businesses don't have to have a shop yeah they have a shop because that's the traditional business when you're selling uh, clothing or you're selling but yeah. all of that can be digitized yeah, and, yeah. and done online and therefore you don't there is no shop to flood that can cause obviously um you know people losing their jobs at the same time i mean yes, yes, uh, probably yes. probably one of the things to look at is mm. uh, we've been talking recently mm. uh about uh, an institution called peckham heights yes that's right yeah uh and peckham heights Peck, peckham levels yeah. on peckham levels yeah um i've just thought about better name for them yes that's it well, that, yes <laughs> it yes. sounds it sounds more like uh, beverly hills it does exactly it does it does they, I'm, oh, I'm, sure gonna, I'm sure they're gonna take that <laughs> And st steal it for, well, if they do change the name, I'll get, <laughs> yeah, them, to, we, we I'll get them to pay you something. We want a percentage. Yeah, Peckham right. Levels. Yeah. Now, they've built their businesses in a former car park. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. So the reality is that they're up off the ground anyway. Yeah, that's exactly. So, so perhaps looks, we should be looking at uh, brownfield sites like yes, car parks and yes, so forth. Yes, that's right. Well. Repurposing facilities that are seemingly, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago may have been uh used for one usage and you can repurpose it for another usage and that's a good example i think the company's called makeshift limited they they own the facility in in partnership with lullabar Suffolk, i think it is and peckham levels is uh, uh they are re have repurposed a car park to make it business units for all sorts of startups it's a fantastic scheme i think it's great and they, they have about and you're telling me i think about 150 businesses yeah they've got 100 they've got, they got 160 businesses 160 in their membership businesses. but 51 51 businesses in the peckham levels Gosh, just facility alone. just alone yeah all startups new creative design uh, diverse businesses fantastic <laughs> stuff a real credit to Suffolk Council and credit to Makeshifts Limited as well. They do, you know, some fantastic stuff there. Do you, do you think there's enough still done? Okay, there are sort of start-up grants and so forth. Yes. Like, but is there, is there enough still being done to actually support um, Joe Bloggs, who mm. just wants to do, I don't know, window cleaning yeah. round or yeah. whatever? In other words, a, a yeah. small business. Yeah. Is there enough being done to actually support them? Still? No, no. I think since 2010, Ian, I think the government, uh, I know under David Cameron's uh, administration, they withdrew from, you know, Business Inc. for London, the kind of government, uh, of course, the mayor does things for businesses, of course, and does a yeah. good job. But the central government withdrew funding from that. And of course, banks are not making any money 
at the moment, and they they certainly they they certainly don't want to be putting their money into small businesses. It's the, one of the areas where it's much more risky for banks. So mm. you've got this double whammy where the banks have withdrawn from this sector, um, the central government has withdrawn from this center as sec sector, and so. The, the amount of support, access to finance, access to funding, access to support is now left to people like myself as independent consultants working with startups or small businesses, sole traders, individuals, charities, people that want to do something, have an idea and want to turn it into something concrete and something uh, uh, physical. Uh, you, you're, and of course, the question, the problem we have is people find it hard, dis difficult to fund it, pay for it, when yeah. you're when you're at the startup phase. Do you phase. think the rates are still high of return? Because what, what is mm. it, about 5%, isn't it, if, if you get a government grant, if I remember right, uh, over five years, something like that, uh, what was yeah. it? Well, the rate, yeah, it's about five, less than 5%, so even cheaper than that, I suspect. It's okay. probably about 3%, 3, okay. 3 4% is the... Okay. But base you, rates are very low. Yeah, where, where, where money money is cheap around the world, but yeah, the question no, is, but, um, they don't, just, do they want to give it to our small business? Just some, coming to small business, yeah. where do people go to actually get the advice? Obviously, people like yourself. But yeah. Is there a government uh, website or yeah, something? Yeah, there is. There is um, you can, uh, well, in London, you've got the, the mayor, is the LEAP, I think they're called, uh, um, uh, local enterprise partnerships type there's a website that they can go on uh, and they can get some really really good advice there uh, so the mayor does put a lot of money into uh, supporting uh, businesses but there's lots and lots of online type um, of support lots of organizations your local bank will give you the basic they can only give you what they produce their sure. banking products and they and often banks have uh, organizations attached to them that can uh, yeah. provide Do you think this. there's too many barriers at times? I mean, mm. obviously there's mm. things like business plans. And, yes. You know, I remember going through yeah. business plans once and uh, yeah. I, had to, I had to create a 40 page business yes, plan right, yes. for a project. Yes. Yeah. yes. Is there too much paperwork involved? Uh, in no, no, I think if you're going to, I think business planning is a good thing. I've, I, I'm a big believer, Ian, in people planning, writing down their ideas, planning, writing it. It doesn't have to be 40 pages, 10 pages will be fine. Six, seven pages is okay as a business, typical business plan if you need it. So there's business plans for funding where you have to give it to another organization for them to understand what you're trying to do so that they can give you money and then uh, and support. Or there's the, and then there's the internal business plan you need for yourself to help you run your business. There are two <laughs> different types of uh, physical documents, but they're both necessary. I think people do, you know, business planning is not the barrier. I think it's more to do with the discipline of business planning, the process that you learn about yeah. what you're trying to do. You're, you're in a sense teaching yourself the idea that you're trying to deliver. Yeah. It forces you to do the research and it forces you to deal with all the critical things so that if you're going to put your 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 redundancy money or your your pension or your whatever into this business you want to make sure that there's a good chance of it being successful yeah perhaps i mean what might be a good idea mm -hmm. um is to bring the dti together and the environment agency together mm -hmm. uh for and perhaps have a fund between the two of them yeah. for businesses that are constantly being attacked by yes, flooding yes, yes. Um, more than anything and, and that might be a sort of a move way forward if we right. just move on now yeah, yeah, to, um, the to coronavirus yes, I mean uh, at the moment China sounds like it's in lockdown yes they're even right. forcing people President Xi from what we are hearing yeah. and you can never believe a lot of the time what's going on in China no uh, is apparently trying to force people back to work again people yes. don't want to work because no. of this virus situation that's right it's now affecting economies right across the world yeah do you think that can affect um, and push us off kilter yeah. for what we're trying to do uh, yeah. post brexit at the same time is yeah. it going to have a business effect on us it will it will ian because you have to remember china manufactures about 25 percent of all the goods of the world are manufactured in china so if china is in lockdown if china is uh, finding it difficult to bring its people back to work, back to its factories. Uh, that's going to affect every country, America, Europe, Britain, all of our 
manufacturing base, 25% of it is produced in China. And so that's going to mean that it's going to take longer for you to get your new mobile phone, uh, longer for you to get your new car, longer for you to get your physical And I suppose, elements. If, and that's if, if you think about it yes. as well, how can these products be uh, safeguarded mm. so that when they come into the country, they're not holding the virus on, on a product? Well, well I, I don't think the virus, I think the virus lasts four or five hours on a physical surface, like a table or... Um, I think that is, uh, in a sense, the government has said wash hands, wash face, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a kind of process. But you don't think there'll be a way of, uh, of no? This I don't think it's. I don't think it's to do with the physical. But I don't think we're going to be ri at risk from products from China. I think more is that China needs to get its economy, which is slowing down, back up to the six percent growth rate that mm. we're, we're at the world. Uh, needs China to keep growing at six, seven percent to keep the you know, kind of integrated global economy going. Uh, we've got the problem with the Americans and China with their disagreements, which I think is getting yeah. resolved. Yeah. We we have allowed Huawei to, you know, we've resolved our issues with China, Hong Kong and China. Uh, those issues are kind of settling down now. I mm -hmm. hope, yeah. and uh, so I think we just need to allow. The world needs to allow these things to sort of chug on and, and work. And I think in the next year, maybe next year, 2021, China would have settled down and be back to normal. Uh, manufacturing will pick up, uh, we'll be fine. We would have learned something from the this, this uh, coronavirus thing and flu. And remember 8,000 people here die in Britain every year yeah. of just the flu. Yeah. And so we, we don't seem to, worry about the flu mm -hmm. and so we shouldn't really worry about this thing because this thing is a, 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 a subset of yeah. the same it's the same uh, virus it's the yeah. same uh, flu virus but it's uh, evolved into something, else, it's something yeah. else but I think at the same time now I mean it just goes to show mm. all the best laid plans of mice, mice and men yes, exactly. you know um, right. you know because uh, exactly. you know six months ago Boris Johnson was saying this is what's going to happen yeah this is gonna and then yes. uh, it, it, it's like a double whammy is yeah, hit him at the moment. Yeah, yes, yes. You know, coronavirus on one hand, yes. uh, affecting the global economy, yes. uh, floods in Britain, yes. in the other economy. Yes. No wonder he's in his bunker at the that's moment right. and not willing to put his head above the parapet, yes, you know, right. until these things uh, yes. uh, seem to I, have been resolved. I, I suspect the Prime Minister will eventually come forward with a statement. I, I suspect his people are... Uh, they're aware he's going just, to be forced to isn't he uh, he'll be forced to just like me and you are aware he will be forced to make some kind of statement about these things uh, and be or he'll get he's seen out there as well well it would well that we would it would be great if you're if we have a leadership in this country and we if prime minister is our national leader then he needs to step forward and uh, present to the british people the plans going forward he needs to get his ministers in his cabinet to do their thing as well which uh, you know i'm sure those plans are in place so uh, you know we want him to step forward and you know be a successful uh whether you voted for him whether you like him or not it's irrelevant it's we more, need to make brexit work it needs to work it needs yeah. to work for the country from for our children for our grandchildren for our businesses for our people in the nation, our citizens, it needs to work well. So we need uh, Mr. Johnson to deliver a statement that is strong and clear. But deliver and, the goods. And, and deliver the goods as well. And if he wants to come to Positive Britain, we, we, we invite you. We will you. certainly put, point Prime him Minister, in the right direction. Prime Minister, we invite <laughs> you to Positive Britain to come on and be interviewed by Mr. Ian here and, and, and myself, and we would love to talk to you. Uh, and so you're at, at liberty to come and connect with us and join with us. Absolutely. So, uh, Michael, as always, it's been fabulous talking to you again. You're a mine of information. Thank you, Ian. All good information as well. And Great so stuff. Thank you for today. So uh, that's another report from positivebritain.co.uk in conjunction with ALB UK Television. Uh, we obviously sort of try to monitor things constantly on where are the positive aspects for Britain and what should we be doing right now to make Brexit especially the most positive outcome we personally can do. So from Michael and Thank from you. myself, 
goodbye for now have a great time and we will be on again soon with another edition of our positive britain.uk programming thank you goodbye for now